Hi guys and welcome to this short tutorial. In this video I want to show you how you can control a production line with the help of a computer. The production line should have two properties. First, it shall always produce two dishes in advance. These dishes will be buffered in a storage container. And then you can quickly respond to incoming orders. Second, there shall be a production limit and if this production limit is reached, no more dishes are produced in this production line. This is rather helpful if you are at the end of a mission and you receive more orders than you need to fulfill the mission. Oftentimes, the production of these additional orders is started and you exceed the ingredients quota and fail the mission. By this adjustment, this will never happen. For demonstration purpose, I have set up this scenario. There are two dishes to be served. These are fries and plain burgers. The fries are produced in the production line at the top. And this production line is controlled by an order reader. So we will ignore this production line for the rest of the video. More interesting is the production line at the bottom. This is the production line for the plain burgers. This production line is controlled by an AC16. All the produced burgers are stored within this storage box here and as soon as the order reader receives an order for a plain burger, it activates robot arm and this robot arm takes one unit out of the box and puts it on the belt. The production itself is controlled by switching on and off the two dispensers and this switching on and off is done by the computer. I use the repeater to make the whole implementation a little bit simpler. So now let's have a look at the computer. Within the menu for the computers we have first to set the orders. As we want to produce the plain burgers we set R0 to plain burgers. Then we have machines which is the output channel. For the output channel we take the repeater and this is labeled with O0. And finally we have the code. Within this code there are two variables, V0. V0 is a counter for the number of dishes that have already been produced. And there is V1 which is a timer for our production. Let's go back to the dispensers. I have set both dispensers to a timing of 6 seconds. So every 6 seconds this dispenser will release one row patty. The same holds true for the burger pan. This is also set to 6 seconds. This computer program is executed 30 times a second. That means if we want to cover a time of 6 seconds we will have to multiply this 6 seconds time 30 cycles which is 180. That means to cover a time of 6 seconds our program has to run 180 times. So let's go through the lines. At the beginning both variables are initialized with a value of 0. So if this holds true, which is true at the beginning, we will execute this and set the output channel to zero. That means we switch off all machines. The next holds true to v0 is also zero. That means we execute these lines which are between the J and E and this label here. We set the variable v1 to a value of 360 as one production cycle is 180 these are two production cycles. We switch on the machines, so the output O0 is set to 1, the machines are switched on, and the counter for the produced burgers is set to 2. These are two cycles, so there will be two burgers produced. We increase the counter by 2. Now we compare the counter to the value of 10. If this value is greater than 10, then we will skip all the commands here and end up at this label here. 
The purpose of these lines here is that we want to switch off the complete production line as soon as 10 dishes have been reached. So if we are below 10 dishes, all the commands in between will be executed. What we do here is we read out the input, so if there are any orders received within this time step here. If this is holds true, then we switch on all the machines, so we set the output O0 to 1. And we increase the timer V1, which is the timer for the production, by 180. So this is one complete production cycle for our burgers. As we produce one burger, we increase our counter of V1 by 1. And finally we have here a command to decrease V1. So it starts with 180 and it, it, if it reaches this, this line here it will be reduced to 179. Then the pro program starts at the beginning again. So we first we have the comparison of V1 to 0. If a production is running this doesn't hold true and we immediately move to this line here. V1 has been increased to 2 already so this block of commands is also ignored and we are in this block here again. If we receive some further orders we will increase the timer by 180, that means we initiate the production of a further burger and we increase the timer, the counter for V1. However, as we decrease V1 by 1 every execution of this program, at some point V1 will reach 0. If this happens, then the production will be switched off. So the output O0 will be set to 0. So now let's see how this program works in action. I start the mission and you see that the dispensers are switched on immediately. We set our program that the production line should produce two burgers and then wait for the first order to be placed. And this happens now. The first burger is now in our storage unit. And so does the second one. Production has stopped, so no burgers are on the way. Now let's wait for the first order to appear here. First order has appeared and our program has switched on the dispensers. That means there is one burger produced. There is one in the storage container, which is now removed and our production has run again and we will soon have two burgers in our storage unit again. So there should be the second one. Now I will increase time stepping a little bit. So still our production line is producing the burgers. But soon we will reach the maximum which we set to 10 burgers. So there won't be an 11th burger. And this is what happened now. Although we have a lot of open orders, our production line does not produce any more burgers because we set the maximum amount of burgers to be produced to be 10. So let's sum up. We have two variables. The first one, V1, is a counter for all the previous burgers. This line here limits the production to 10. If we want to produce more than 10 burgers, we will need to increase this number here. For example, if we want to have 20 burgers, we have to set the 20. Then we have V1, which is the timer for the production. 
Each production cycle takes 6 seconds and we have to multiply this with 30, so we end up with 180, which is here, and 360 because we want to have two burgers at the beginning. If we have a production line with a time cycle of, let's say, 8 seconds, then we have to multiply the 8 seconds times 30, that means we have to adjust this value to 240 and this to 480. Unfortunately, this implementation has some drawbacks. The first one is that this condition here is reached as soon as there is at least one order. If there is at least one order, one burger is produced. However, there may be more than one orders within one of these execution cycles. For example, if you have a takeout and a restaurant, it may be that at the same time you receive two or even three orders. With this implementation you will only produce one burger, although you perhaps need two or three. So we need to adjust that. With this AC16 computer, this is a little bit tricky to implement. It's much easier to use the next model, the AC16, which is already here. So I will disconnect this computer here put it to the bench and we take the AC16. I connect this one to the repeater. Okay. And now let's have a look at the code again. So it's mostly the same program as we saw on the AC16. The only lines that I have to adjust it are these two here, line 90 and line 20. I used a further variable which is here V3 and this v3 is set to the multiplica multiplication mal is standing for multiplication mal from r0 times 180 so if we receive one order v3 will be set to 180 if we receive two orders it will be 360. and the next step we add this v3 to v1 v1 was the timer we add this to v1 and now we have set the timer appropriately so we have exactly as many production cycles as we need for, for all the orders. We can further adjust this program by changing this timer here. This timer is 2 times the 180, that means there are 2 burgers produced. If I want to produce three burgers, I would have to add an additional 180, which is 540. Now I take 539, so it's not 540, and we just look what happened. What happens? So I start. Again, the suspenders are switched on. Two burgers will be produced and we will have a look at the dispensers. So this is the second one and now the dispenser is already running for the third burger. But it will be stopped at 99%. By doing so the dispenser will immediately release the ingredients when we receive a new order. So you see we received an order and immediately there was a release of the ingredient. Otherwise, without this adjustment, we first have to wait the 6 seconds until the ingredient is put into the production. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video.